Hi DIYers, Sterling with Alarm Grid here. Today we're going to show you how to program a Honeywell 5800PIR-RES wireless motion detector. 5800 is just the common series. 5800 series is any wireless device that works with a Honeywell wireless panel. PIR means passive infrared. That's the type of technology that this motion uses. That's the most common type of technology used with a motion for a burglary alarm system. And RES means residential. So that doesn't mean you can't use it in a commercial application. In fact, this is by far the most commonly used motion with a Lynx Touch panel. So even if you're in a business, don't feel like you can't use this sensor. This motion is included with the kits that we offer on our website. It's also included with kits sold by nearly any alarm company that's offering this Lynx Touch L5200 system. So inside our box we have our motion detector and we have our battery which will power our motion detector. You can see uh, this is the Fresno lens, this is the motion lens. Um, on the inside there's the passive infrared device looks through this lens. This lens shoots down the zones of detection into the room which gives us our motion protection throughout our room. At the bottom here we have this little tab that we can depress to pop it open and you can see it consists of just a plastic back plate which we use to affix to the wall. There's screw holes on the back and then there's screw holes that you can drill out on the side for corner mounting that's what you do with the back plate and then we have our actual motion detector which is on the back side of this plastic and then again seeing through the lens. To give power to the unit we need to insert our battery. The 5800 PIR Res uses the same battery as the 5816 door and window sensor, the CR123A. It's a 3 volt lithium and right here in the plastic of the device you have an imprint for a positive and a negative so you know exactly how to install your battery. Your battery, you have your positive side and your negative side and you simply snap it in place. Now our motion has power and every time we wave our hand in front of it or move we're getting this light to indicate that it's picking up motion. That LED uh, indicator is only live during the first 10 minutes after you power up the unit. You can reset that 10 minute period by popping the battery out and putting it back in, but this is designed so that you can temporarily mount it where you think you're going to have it and you would be able to walk throughout the room and make sure that that light is coming on every time you have motion. And then you would know that that is a good installation location and then you can program it to the panel and permanently mount it. Again, after the 10 minute period that light cuts out, the motion is still working, it's just no longer giving you the visual indication. The reason it doesn't do this all the time is because we want the battery to last longer than it would if it was indicating the LED each time. So I just want to point that out. Now that we have the power and we know how this device works, we're going to show you how to program it to this system. So the Lynx Touch L5200, we're on the security tab, which from the home screen, you hit security to get to here, and you have an option for more at the bottom right. When you hit more, you then see the option for tools. Tools is prompting you for a code. They're looking for the master code or the installer code. To program a zone, we need our installer code, which by default is 4112. We type that in and we have the option now for program. When we hit program, we see at the top it shows that we are in system programming. That yellow bar at the top doesn't go away. That's no matter where you are in programming, it will show that. For the motion or for any sensor, to program it, we have to go to zones. All right, and here we have our list of our zones. We already have some sensors programmed. So this is our motion that we want to learn in and we're going to choose the next available zone which happens to be zone 8. When we highlight it, it says uh, it goes to blue, we see zone 8 new and we have the option to edit the zone. And that page is the zone 8 edit screen and this is where you learn in the sensor. The first thing that we need to do is program the serial number. The serial number is a 7 digit number that tells the system how to look or, or accept uh, inputs from this device. So that's how you pair a device back to the panel with the serial number. 
click into the box, and there's three, there's two different ways. One is to type in the number. The other way, which I'm indicating just by moving around, each time I move is faulting the device. And you have to fault it three times to get it to learn in. You heard it beep once, you heard it beep twice, and now we've heard it beep three times. That was me faulting the device just by moving. Three faults of the device learned in the proper serial number. You can verify. You will never have this number not be what's here, but you can see it does say 0221221. Proper serial number is enrolled. The loop number one was learned in automatically. That is the proper loop number to use with this device. That is detailed in the installation guide that comes with the device. And of course, uh, is information that we have on our website. But you can verify, again, that loop number one is what we want to use. And by auto-enrolling, it automatically selects the loop so you can't make the mistake of programming the wrong loop. Now that we've done that, we have to tell the panel, what is this device? Because right now it doesn't know if it's a door, a window, a motion. It doesn't know how to respond to this device, and it doesn't know how to talk to this device. By selecting the device type and selecting motion sensor, we're telling the system this particular serial number is assigned to a motion. And from there, we have the option for response type. Response type is a selectable option for the various ways that this device can communicate back to the panel. When this device is triggered, the response type will tell the panel how to act. In our case, 90% of the time for a motion, you're going to want to set an interior follower or interior with delay. Interior follower is the most popular selection. What interior follower says is, first of all, because it's interior, when the system is armed to stay mode, meaning we're in the home, the motion will be turned off. Automatically, the panel will bypass that zone. Any faults of this zone will not be seen by the panel. Therefore, we're not setting off false alarms as we walk throughout our house in the stay mode. When we arm to away mode, then the sensor's live and active and ready to go because, of course, we're out of the house. If there's motion at that time, we would like to know that there's an alarm. All right, so the follower aspect of interior versus the one that was with delay. The with delay will always have a delay. When it's activated, you'll have 30 seconds to get to the keypad and turn it off before you hear the alarm. When you do follower, it will be an instant alarm. So as soon as there's motion, the siren goes off unless we are going through a delay zone first. So if we walk through our front door, which is a delay zone, the panel will have the 30 seconds. It will beep and alert you. Okay, you need to type in your code before the alarm goes off. If you then walk through your living room motion on the way to the keypad, instead of instantly going off, which would cause a false alarm, it knows to follow the delay of the front door. And therefore, it automatically knows that we're still in the delay period. As long as we disarm the system in time, there's no alarm triggered. So interior follower is the most popular selection for a motion. We want to name the motion from there to say where we're going to install it. In this case, we're going to put it in our family room. So Factory. if we select F, we can see it selects the very first F word in the library of the available words that it can speak. If we hit the Failure. down, if we hit the down arrow, we can cycle down until we see family room. Fa family room. Family room. So click done and we've locked it in. Family room motion sensor. It will say all four of those words. It'll speak whatever's in the zone descriptor one. We could have selected a zone descriptor two if we wanted. Family room west motion, family room east motion. In our case, we only have one family room motion, so we're going to leave it as family room. And then the last three selections are toggle options, but we have alarm report. This says, do we want an alarm activation from this device to go through and report to our central station? In our case, we do. Our system is monitored, and then we do want to know when it goes off. So we're going to leave it alarm report yes. Chime is disabled. Typically, you don't want a chime on a motion because a chime would be used for doors and windows to indicate their opening. As we walk throughout our house, we don't want this thing beeping at us and saying family room motion every time we move in the room. That would get annoying, and it would also drain the battery. Supervision is supervised. That just means that the panel will check and see that this device with this serial number is checking in properly. It does that check every 12 hours, and 
if for some reason the panel was not seeing the device, after the 12 minute, uh, 12 hour period, it would indicate a supervision fault, and then you would know you have an issue to address with the motion, perhaps it's out of range, or installed in a spot in the home where there's interference back to the panel, uh, or perhaps the device has been completely destroyed and therefore the panel's not seeing it. So the supervision will tell you and make sure that the device is active when you need it to be. So we save it to lock in our settings. So now that we're on the home screen and we have our, our device enrolled, if we hold it up and we move in front of it, as soon as the light comes on, we get a fault. As soon as the light goes away, the panel goes back ready to arm. So the fault indicates that the device is being activated. You'll notice it's not saying family room motion because there's no chime. It's just giving us the not, the not ready. It does give us an indication of the zone that's in fault uh, once it's faulted. So we know family room is the device that there's motion and we need to make sure that everyone is perfectly still in the house or that we have no one in the family room hiding and that would let us arm the system. So once there's no motion, it goes ready to arm and we can arm our system. So that is the 5800PIR-RES programming to a Lynx Touch L5200 system. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you have any questions on the 5800PIR-RES or the 5200 panel or any questions at all, please email us support at alarmgrid.com.